Uh, I want to thank the Lord so much, those uh, who have managed to come. May the Lord of heaven really bless you. And uh, we pray that we'll have a, a blessed time here together. Uh, those uh, who are just coming, my name is uh, Sammy Wilberforce, if you have ever heard the name. And uh, the camp is like it is starting. I know it will pick up tomorrow. There has been a lot of technical uh, problems here and there. And uh, there have been a lot of interactions, but uh, I believe by tomorrow, the camp will pick up and then we can have good 17 days of messages coming to us. And so uh, I, I'm standing here and uh, just telling the people who uh, actually were never here, I, I'm, I'm going through the the church history, the prophetic insights, and then the gospel order, the three topics. That is what I'm handling. So uh, if you want to know where we are coming from and where we are going, the Lord be with you. Pray for me. Amen. Amen. I'm a very harsh man. I may give you a transport to go back home so that we may just remain with the people who are ready for the camp meeting, amen? Now, no answer. Amen? amen. Yeah. So pray for me that uh, we shall be able to coordinate. So far, so good, is it? Yeah. So far, so good, is it? Or something has gone amiss? Pray for the other ministers that they may have good health and also God may use them to speak the words they should speak for such a time as this. Don't just see the ministers standing here and you say, oh, that man has learned and have information or oh, that man is okay. No, they are struggling on their knees to make sure that what they bring to you will be helpful. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the ministers are not machines. They are human beings and uh, they have to study what to give you. So sometimes you see people going through the slides and PowerPoints and you think, oh, this one was prepared a long time ago. Some people just don't sleep. They prepare these things. And so pray for them that they may have a humble time to prepare the materials and give what is necessary. You know, we have this habit of uh, bringing to people what we think is for them. But your prayers can be able to change what the minister is going to bring unto you so that it suits the occasion rather than just giving information of already what has been prepared on slides. And so as you pray about other things, just pray about the ministers. We did an introduction of the book of Daniel chapter one, and if you missed the first two sessions, uh, I don't want to tell you you missed a lot, but that is the truth of the matter. But we are doing everything we can to make sure that they are uploaded on YouTube, and you can ask a link anytime from Brother Jordan, who is just entering, so that he may give you the link to YouTube channel, you may download the material you missed. We want to apologize for the materials which have not been uploaded so far because of the network problem. There are other materials which have not been uploaded. But um, we are trying to make sure that everything is going there so that uh, if you miss something, you can go back and recheck. But we don't want you to have the habit of missing something. Okay? What if it was a final hearing, and then you go to a test. Will you have time to recheck again? So be attentive to what is being spoken of. Don't rely on those links because you may go there and the owner of YouTube have removed them. What will you do? Hmm? Now, it's like I'm wasting time, is it? 
So be attentive to what the minister is speaking. I'm praying when uh, I, I'm seated there that, Lord, speak to my heart, not speak to the people. You shouldn't be praying for anything else. Pray that the Lord will speak to what? To your heart individually as the minister is speaking. And so we finished Daniel chapter 1, and I just want to enter into, into that, introducing Daniel chapter 2 and see where the Lord will reach us. And uh, I presume Daniel chapter 2 will be one of uh, the longest presentations uh, that maybe I'll have on the book of Daniel, because I know Brother Ken is going to touch a few things in Daniel and Revelation. And so I want just to concentrate on those things that he may not be able to deal with. And uh, in Daniel chapter 2, I'm going to deal with the financial crisis in Daniel chapter 2. And so I want us to uh, ask the Lord for his blessing before we continue. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, we are not sufficient enough to stand in your presence, but because of the blood of your Son, we can come and claim you as our Father. Because of what Christ has accomplished at Calvary, we can tap into the blessings of heaven and be partakers of the divine nature after escaping the corruption that is in this world. Now, may you touch my lips and Lord, may you sanctify my ears that I may hear what you want to speak to me and uh, I may relate to your children and let them not receive anything from human lips, but that which you have purposed for them to receive. And so forgive me my sins. And Lord, you may use me as a vessel of honor in thy sanctuary. And unto thy people, may you believe a blessing unto their life in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, you try to move the camera down like yeah 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 thank you so much in the sense uh there's a lot of things happening in the book of Daniel chapter two and I want you to have your Bible and then uh, I'll read a few things that are in the book of Daniel, chapter 2. After the crisis in Daniel chapter 1, the three Hebrew artists were being prepared to face the crisis in Daniel chapter 3 because there was a vision to be given in Daniel chapter 2. And uh, in Daniel chapter 2, it says, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to shew the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Now, that is what the heathens do. That they go to consult what? The magicians, the astrologers, and what kind of people? The sorcerers. If you find yourself doing the same thing, you can count yourself a heathen as early as possible, okay? And so, if we are going to consult what the heathens consult, Will we be able to stand against the same heathens when the crisis comes? If we are reading their books, and uh, I just, uh, I'm requesting the people who are joining Zoom, outside this room, they may keep their volume muted because we are doing some recording and we don't want interference. Uh, and so, if, uh, you are going to consult their books to get the information to help you live in the crisis that is coming. Will you be able to stand the crisis? And that is why we learn that the mother of Daniel, after observing what Babylon had instituted, 
and how it had copied the things of the devil, how the devil had used it. And then living in the time of paganism, where Romanism had taken over the world, he said that my child cannot go to their school to get education to be able to live in Babylon in the crisis that is coming. Get me the, so it. After identifying that there was a captivity coming, the mother knew very well that she could not educate or the child could not be educated in the system they are going to be captive in. She had to educate her children out of that system for them to be able to stand in the system that was coming. Are we together? Mm. Are we understanding each other? Yes. You cannot prepare for the crisis that is coming by partaking of the same things of the system which is coming to mount the crisis. If you are used to the things of Babylon, when Babylon sets up its kingdom, will you realize that Babylon has started its kingdom? Mm. You won't realize because the system is used to what is in Babylon. So when Babylon comes on the scene, you have no clue that Babylon is here. Are we together? And so the king dreams a dream. The, the king is uh, having a dream and he is consulting the magicians and the sorcerers. And in the end time, the reason why he was consulting them is to understand the dream so that he may respond to the dream itself. And so there are some future events that are coming and we need to consult. While the people of the world are consulting the same like-minded people so as they may prepare for the crisis, what do you think we should be doing? What do you think we should be doing? I talk too fast, is it? I'm saying this. There's a crisis coming, is it? And there are visions of the future, is it true? And the people who know their future events and the crisis coming are consulting like-minded people to prepare for that crisis, is it? If it is the heathens, they are consulting their fellow heathens to know how to prepare for the crisis, is it? How about the children of God? Whom should they be consulting? God. And that is why on the day of atonement, the children of God were gathered around the sanctuary to hear what the Lord was speaking. We shouldn't be gathered any other place than around the sanctuary to be able to hear the voice of the Lord telling us on how to behave in the crisis that is near us. And so uh, look at this kingdom in Daniel chapter 2 as just we give it an introduction that uh, the kingdom which Nebuchadnezzar brought to the height of its glory can be traced in the Bible history to its foundation. Can we see the screen? I know it's not that clear, and uh, I'll try. Sometimes this doesn't get so clear. Mm. That is fair. The kingdom which Nebuchadnezzar brought to the height of its glory can be traced in Bible history to its what? The history of Babylon is the story of the what? So as we are in Daniel chapter 2, what crisis are we in? Which crisis? The great controversy. Once you realize Daniel chapter 2 is the great controversy. Do we understand what is the great controversy? What is the great controversy? Yeah, I have a good student here. Daniel chapter 2. What is Daniel chapter 2, the great controversy? So what is great controversy? Yeah, Mama Sandelo. Mm -hmm. 
to opposition side that is fair enough that is fair enough who else about worship. about worship now i don't want elders to fail brother p what is the great controversy Satan and his angels. That is the great controversy. The warfare between Christ and his angels and Satan and his angels. And so what you are facing in Daniel chapter 2 is nothing else but a war between Christ and Satan. And we are only subjects that are found in between this war that is going on. And listen to what it continues to say. Um, the history of Babylon is the story of the great controversy between Christ and Satan and began when? In heaven, continued on earth and which will end only when the stone cut out without hands from the mountain shall fill the whole earth, shall fill the what? The whole earth. And it continues to say, Certain accusation against God is that the Father is unjust. unjust, but give me a fair chance, argued Lucifer, and I can establish a kingdom on earth which will excel in glory the kingdom of God in heaven. He was granted the privilege of making a trial, the plains of where? There in Mesopotamia, Iraq, where the Garden of Eden was. The plains of Shina were chosen. The people whom God told to fill the whole earth were gathered into a city. Babylon grew and its mighty walls 350 feet in height and eight, seven feet three thick with the massive gates of brass were designed to imitate the strength of the city of God at the time of the founding of Babylon. Uh, at the time of founding Babylon, Satan was still meeting with the council of the representatives of the world, which was held at the gates of heaven. It was his design to counterfeit the plans of who? Now you have to understand what is happening in Daniel chapter two, because God gives this king a dream that there shall be kingdoms, the head of what? And then the chest of what? And the breast of? And the thighs and the legs of what? And the feet and the toes of what? And so he gives him a successive of kingdoms. But what does Satan do? He says, mine cannot pass away. The one that I have started where the garden of Eden was at the plains of Shina in Mesopotamia, the whole image will be the image of what? God. God. And it has to rival the kingdom of God. And then God tells him, I'm going to give you a chance and let us see if this kingdom is going to happen. The controversy in Daniel chapter 2. God wants to do something. And that is how we flatter ourselves today until the time of coming Christ, of coming of Christ, the first coming of Jesus Christ, Satan in Matthew chapter 4 takes Jesus to the mountain, and what does he do? He shows him all what? The walls and their glories and tells him, do what? If you worship me, I'll do what? Give you all this because they do what? Belong unto me. And then in Revelation chapter 13, the same controversy in the book of Genesis chapter 2, the same controversy in Daniel chapter 2, is the same controversy in Daniel chapter 13. Worship me. The whole world wondered after what? The beast. And who gave the beast the power? The dragon gave him the power and the what? The seal. And so there is nothing new in Revelation chapter 13, but only to try us who have come to the end of this world. 
but we can escape it if we go back to the history and be able to see how those who preceded us were able to overcome. What do you think Eve could have done to overcome the devil? Was it a question? I'm not a preacher. I'm speaking to a class. What do you think Eve could have done? And if I know your name, you are in trouble. If I know your name, just go hide. Because I'll keep on calling your name until you run away. So before I call your name, what do you think Eve could have done to evade the devil? Yes, brother. You could have listen. not listen. That, that, that is a good answer. Not listen to the devil. What else could she have done? Yes, Shalom. Eve should have not wandered away from where Adam was. That is another good answer. I'm looking for those answers. Many of them. Which one again? Yes, brother. She would not have gone near that tree. Not gone near that tree. That is a good answer, and we shall find that in Daniel chapter 4, that she could have not gone near the tree of good and evil because God had only intended that she know what was good. When you reach to Daniel chapter 4, you will find it so very uh, 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 vivid that you cannot miss it, that in going near that tree, and testing it, it corrupted the goodness that was in her. And that tree is the tree that is seen in Daniel chapter 4. And it has spread all its branches around the world. And everyone is eating from it while thinking that they are finding comfort under it. Daniel chapter 4 will be so significant to your answer. What do you think she could have done? My question has been partially answered. <laughs> Remained around the sanctuary. Yes. Thank you. I want people to start again thinking the other way. There is a lot of avoidance. Yes. Never responded. There is a lot of negatives. I want something positive. Do you, do you hear your answers? They are more negative than positive. I need a positive answer. That is what I'm looking for. The voice of the Lord was the only thing. She could have continued listening to the voice of God. And many have wandered away for, by not listening to the voice of God. We are trying to avoid things. And even in the process, we avoid God himself. Do you understand that? Some people are running out of Babylon. By the way, how many people are homeschooling? Homeschooling. Homeschooling. You are home? No, that, that will be, a, I, I would like to see parents first before. You are a parent? No, you are too young. I was to be short. How many parents are homeschooling? And remember, I'll ask you a question. So, if you don't want to answer a question, don't raise your hand. <laughs> I don't want to trap you. So let me go to the back to the children. How many have been homeschooled? But the parents are not here. There's something that Brother Wycliffe said. Do you have a class at your home? A class, not a sitting room, to use as a class. The other one, that is your sister. You have classes where you can go and read and come out of the room, is it? That, that, that is something important because people are talking about homeschooling and when the policeman comes, you can show for it. We, we need, I, I think he'll uh, magnify on that point. But then I was saying that uh, for Eve to evade what was happening, he, she had to continue listening to the voice of God and people are not listening to the voice of God. And so 
at the time of founding Babylon, Satan was still meeting with the Council of Representatives, and that is what he's offering to us every time. Another thing is we are chasing after the things God have not ordained us to have. That is why we are finding ourselves in a crisis that we are having. The reason why the devil will sweep the whole world is that he will find that people who are chasing what actually uh, God has not ordained that they should um, chase after. So we are told it was his design to counterfeit the plans of what? Plans of God. This is the great controversy in Daniel chapter 2. And because the you know you have to understand what Satan is doing here. In the Garden of Eden, when God was establishing his kingdom there, we had there the gold which was from Ethiopia, and it was pure gold from the land of Ahab. Is it? Are we there? When Satan comes in Daniel chapter 2, what does he say? All the kingdom will be the kingdom of God. Of God. Because that is the kingdom that God had established there in Genesis. And Satan says, oh, God gave Adam and Eve that fine gold from Ahab. What else can I offer you? And what does he offer the world? He offers them gold in Daniel chapter 2, the whole kingdom of God. He tells them you will never need anything. You will never desire God again. And then God gave them the gold from the land of Ahab, and this gold was purified by the rivers Hydakel and P, uh, what is Pishon and Gihon and the other river, which was it? Euphrates. And then when man sins and the Garden of Eden is taken away, what the devil does in establishing Daniel chapter 2, actually he just comes and puts there where the Garden of Eden was, his empire. And Babylon, instead of having a land which is fruitful only and rivers running in it, the devil decides even the buildings will be having hanging gardens of gold, is it? What else can you desire? And so the people living in Babylon at that time were really tricked into thinking this was the reality when there was no reality at all. Is it? And today when you go to the cities to find a job, how, how, how are the buildings looking? Like? Huh? They are looking good until when you are told about Jerusalem coming from heaven, you wonder if it will be better than that, is it? Mm. The great controversy between Christ and his angels and Satan and his angels. And so, the story continues. Thank you so much, Brother Lampard. Yes. Can you hear? And so the, the story continues. Yeah, that is a good confirmation. Look at this, brothers and sisters. I'm introducing Daniel chapter 2. Are we understanding a thing? I mean, I lost. Are we seeing the great controversy? Yeah. And so I, I don't want just to speak and then people go and say, oh, that was a nice lesson. How nice was it? It was nice. What did you learn? It was nice. Uh, sometimes you, you hear these answers. Can you tell me anything you heard from it? Just know the lesson was nice. And uh, so what did Saturn do? I think I have like 20 minutes, I'll be done. The plains of Shina, I have to finish at 4.30, is it? The plains of Shina were chosen. The people whom God told to fill the whole earth were gathered into a city. 
Babylon grew and it is mighty walls 350 feet in height and 87 feet thick with the massive gates of brass were designed to imitate the strength of the city of, which city is that? The new walls, Jerusalem. So heaven was where? On earth and that is when today you ask the youth, should Christ come the second time? They tell you what? Wait for a minute, because this world looks like the new Jerusalem, is it? Is that true? We are in a great controversy, are we not? Yeah. We are in a great, don't think that it is just something subconscious going through you. We are in a great what? Controversy, and Satan has made things to look like Christ has lost this empire, but he's not going to lose it. And... Uh, at the time of the founding of Babylon, Saturn still meeting, was meeting with the council of the representatives of the world, which was held at the gates of heaven. It was his design to counterfeit the plans of God. Down here, we are told the earthly city was patterned after the heavenly. The Euphrates flowed through it as did the river of God through what? Paradise. Are we together? The government was absolute monarchy. A man occupied the throne. And as it grew, every knee of the earth was cause to bow to it is king. Now, you have to understand the four prophetic lines of the book of Daniel. First of all, it is the restoration of the king, and then the restoration of the kingdom. Then we have the restoration of the sanctuary, and then the restoration of the people. That is what was lost in the Garden of Eden. And that is what God is trying to restore in Daniel chapter 2 as that he's given the dream. This kingdom shall be there with this king. You are the king, Nebuchadnezzar, the head of God. There is the restoration of the king and the kingdom. Then, then Christ tells him, after this, there shall be inferior and inferior, but at the end of it, there shall be another kingdom a kingdom of stone which shall not be left unto the people. But then we have to have a king, a kingdom, the sanctuary which was lost in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned, and then we must have also the people restored into that sanctuary, the Garden of Eden. And so that is what God is trying to do in Daniel chapter 2. And the crisis will reach its climax when the lamb is seen on the throne and he's having a kingdom and with him 144 standing with him having the father's name in their forehead and that is what Satan is preventing for Christ to be a king but for Christ to be a king what must happen he must what 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 must have for Christ to become a king he must have what a bride. There is another answer in here. Can you become a king without a territory? You must have a territory to be a king, is it? So the territory must be identified so that the king may be. And then the elections have to be done to put the king on the throne, is it? How do we put Christ on the throne? The people have to decide, is it? How do we decide? by taking our sins, giving to the high priest, and him giving it back to the Azazel, or the scapegoat, then he can be able, he sends the Azazel into the wilderness, then he can become a king on his throne. And then he can have his people back, gathered in the sanctuary or the Garden of Eden restored. And so the battle is going on in Daniel chapter 2, and Nebuchadnezzar is given a chance to establish his kingdom and see if it will remain forever. As he says, it is the uh, kingdom of God. Not only the power, but the wisdom also of Nebuchadnezzar was exceeding great. The king favored education, and during his reign, Babylon was the educational center of the world. Every art and science was taught in the school of Babylon. The wisdom of the ancients were made known to the students who sat at the feet of her magicians and wise men. They reveled in the study of astronomy and what? Higher math. Higher mathematics, is it? Is that what people study today? 
You know, we have to relate with the prophecies of Daniel as if it were happening to us today. What are the very causes that people are studying right now so as to have money? Sandes, is it? Higher mathematics, algebra, and whatever classical mathematics you can talk about. Calculus. And if you want just to see the higher mathematics that are going on right now, you, you have to study the Tower of Babylon. How could the Tower of Babylon reach there in heaven? What kind of mathematics was that? It was a higher mathematics, Shalom. <laughs> you got it. Go there. I haven't seen buildings here in Kampala. That is not to look down upon you. Where are the highest buildings? We go there. Do we have higher buildings here? No. Huh? Where? <laughs> the buildings we call skyscrapers. Are they here in Uganda? Yeah. They are not there. They are not there. I told you Uganda is the best country to live in. Don't leave this country because evil has not come here. Go to our country, Kenya. They are competing which building will reach the sky first. Now, if you want a fair account, so I, we can go and you see, and you come back. Don't go and remain there. Because they are the, those who have gone to see them and they have said, allow me to just for a moment look at them. And while looking at them, they fell on them. The buildings are being built in Nairobi. I wish we could, uh, I'll have to show you these things. For you to understand that we are no longer at the beginning of the age, but at the end of the age, not only the things that are happening in the spiritual kingdom, but also in the literal kingdom. Are we together? People are competing in Nairobi to see which building can reach the sky. Do you think they, they, they'll be able to do that? What do you think? Will, yes, uh, Brother Henry. In the sky. In sky. Don't say in sky, in space. <laughs> yeah. If you reach the sky, then Christ has to come. Yes, Edmund. You are competing with Nairobi and we are competing with the God of heaven. So you continue competing with Nairobi. And so if you go to Nairobi, brother, you look at the buildings and you can't see the person at the top. But what God is going to do is cause confusion, is it? And so if you look at the literal kingdoms of this world, they are saying there is nothing that is going to stop us. And soon and very soon, this image in Daniel chapter 2, have you seen it is height, where it was written? Have we read the height? Who has converted the height? It was reaching the sky, yes. Yes, as you look for it. But uh, it was from the people who had studied. People today brag that they have studied something. You cannot study as the people in the land of Shina had studied. Do you know that? Sister White says that today we think that we have intellectual knowledge more than those people, but they were so learned that they could build without using semen. And the building is going on. Is it? Yeah. Now, I can go into the stories of the kings who lived there who made the first propellers in their time. We can't match them in the knowledge because the people who lived at that time had come from the Garden of Eden. They still had that vital power. They were 13 feet tall. And they had retained the knowledge of God and God had given them a vast amount of knowledge that they were using their brain almost 80%. In today's science, how much of the brain of the human being is being used? Not anymore 10%. It is a dot of it. But they were using the full capacity of uh, uh, their knowledge. And so you can be sure that Daniel chapter 2 is being repeated today as we sit here. Men are competing to tell God, we have 
looked at your kingdom and it's not fit for us. And we are going to have another kingdom. Just like Nebuchadnezzar said, the whole of it will be of gold. It will never pass away. So men are saying today, we will have a kingdom. And how do you prove that? Go to YouTube and search. People are now trying to make human beings. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. So what else are they lacking to do? Huh? What, is, what, what is still to be done? Is there anything still to be done? They have explored everything. Only what is remaining is to give the breath of life to human beings. Now, you have to understand there's a problem with that because every time we saw, every time there was a problem with marriage, God intervened, is it? In Genesis chapter 6, in Genesis chapter 3, when there was a problem between Adam and Eve, God had to intervene. In Genesis chapter 6, when we had a problem in marriage, God had to intervene. In Genesis 19, when actually men had a problem with marriage, actually God had to intervene. Numbers chapter 25, he had to intervene. Second Chronicles chapter 36, when they were Sodomites in the land of Israel, God had to intervene. And what he's waiting is for men to start interfering with marriage. Do we see men today trying to interfere with marriage? Yeah. Now, a man can marry a man and a woman marry what? A woman. Somebody is interfering with marriage. And God cannot wait for so long to do something. He's only waiting for you and me to be ready. But everything can be ready except us who has been called to be ready. And men right now are, are, are trying to do everything they can do to destroy the kingdom of God and say their kingdom will never pass away. But in a little while, it will pass away. The king... Let me try and wrap up this. The king himself was highly educated for it was he who examined the students on the completion of their course and granted their what? Where? In the land of Shina. You think the degree was for yesterday, is it? When you are handed a degree, who is giving you a degree? The king of Babylon, who inherited the system of Medo-Persia, is it? Mm -hmm. Daniel 7, 12, the life of the dominion of the other kingdoms were taken away, but their life was extended in the fourth beast, is it? Mm -hmm. And so we took the Grecian system of education and it is accreditation. We will look at it in the church history. Where actually after your completion of education, you are given what? Uh, a gown and you are given that cup to wear. And what were you graduating from, Nis? What were you graduating about? Do you remember? What? Being what? Hey, Shalom, do you remember? What was it? You are graduating from knowledge. Try to think about it. You are graduating as the most ignorant person on the face of the earth. After getting your PhD, you were able to illustrate to the world you are the most ignorant person to the world. Now, people who are not there, go back and look at those things. From the rulers of evil by F.T. Passos, he said that they employed this system of education for learning against doing what? Learning. learning. So the more you learn, the more you are doing what? Unlearning. unlearning. And their unlearning was to overthrow Protestantism, is it? So the more you learn, the more you overthrow what? Protestantism. Are we together? Now, this can never be clear as this. The more you reach at the height of your education, if God doesn't intervene, the more you become a heathen pastor and an atheist. Because you spend a lot of time reading the works of men, the books of infidels, and studying the materials which are so negative against the word of God, that the time you get for studying the word of God, you find that it's not there. How much can you be spiritual without studying the word of God? As the normal food is a nutrient for the physical body, so the Bible is the spiritual food for your spiritual mind.
And the one you feel the most is the one that takes the ascendant in life. Don't cheat me at all. Is it? You can feed on the things that you feed on 24 hours and then read a Bible for two hours and become a Christian. Can you spend the whole time in the world from morning to evening and then come back in the house at night, two hours or 30 minutes you read your Bible and become a Christian? Is it a simple thing? Will you be reading to become a Christian or to pass time? Yeah. You will not be studying to be a Christian. This, this is just logical. Who are, who are in courtship? Who, who is in a courtship? <laughs> People fearing raising their hands because tough questions are coming. Now, who are in marriages? And if you don't care, I'll just illustrate with weekly. Because I don't want anyone to be offended. I want to leave the people of Uganda in peace. <laughs> Brother Wycliffe, how much closer do you become with your wife by spending a lot of time without him? Did anyone hear me? Brother, did you hear me? How much closer do you become with your wife if you spend a lot of time without her? Will you ever know her? Will you ever have that bonding that it says that they shall cleave together? And that is why even when you are married, don't live in the city and the wife is in the rural. Your work is to send man. You will never be a family. That is not what is in Genesis. He says that the woman, the, the, the man left what? The parents and went and cleave. With the, not that the man went into the city and left the wife in the rural. These kind of marriages we are having, we have to revisit them again. So, your wife is so close to the person who helps her in the garden that she is close to you. And you accuse her of fornication. You are the first one to be accused of fornication by leaving her. Because you are not so close to her. But look at this. So, as Babylon was established and the king brought in the human knowledge more, the more the people left the word of God. And so Babylon was proud of her educational system. She trusted to it is salvation, but it was the cause of her ruin. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, uh, it hath caused thee to turn away. God himself speaks, saying, hath not God made the foolish the wisdom of this world? In the Babylonian court, this was exemplified. Nebuchadnezzar and his counselors, uh, the wise men, astrologers, and soothsayers, on one side represented the education of the world. Daniel, a youth not over 21 years of age, a Hebrew and a slave, was chosen by God to confound the wisdom of the mighty. And in this end time, God is calling his people not to be ignorant, but to trust in the knowledge he wants to give them to be able to bring down this kingdom of Babylon. Do you know that? In Daniel chapter 2, you find that a kingdom was set up and it wiped away the other kingdoms that, that were there, is it? And that is what God wants to do. He wants to use us to bring down Babylon. Do you know that? Who will bring down Babylon? Yes. You and me. Christ cannot come from heaven to bring down Babylon. You know that? Because how can he bring down Babylon without a people who have come out of Babylon? Can he be able to do that? Mm. No, Christ will never do that. Until he has a people who have said, this image of gold is not going to exist forever. But we are going to bring it down with everything that consists it. Christ is not coming here. But if he comes... You will only find a few people. And you have to ask yourself, will you be amongst the few that will bring down Babylon? And that is why the call is made in Revelation 18, come out of how what? My people. And so, Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah are taken to Babylon to see if that kingdom can stand forever. 
When they reach there, what do they find? It can never do what? Stand forever. And Daniel purposes in her to come out of Babylon forever. And that is his praying in Daniel chapter 9 and praying, God, when will you restore us back? Because Babylon is fallen, is it? The kingdom of God is coming down in Daniel chapter 2, not in any other book. We see a kingdom bringing it down, and we must be part of the kingdom that will bring down Babylon in Daniel chapter 2. And so I told you that uh, I'll be looking at the financial situation of Daniel chapter 2. The other things you have read and understood, and maybe you may be understanding the finan financial implication of Daniel chapter 2, but we shall look at we shall do a closer look because we are told in Daniel chapter 2, in the days of these kings, is it? God shall do what? Establish. Establish his kingdom, which will be great and will not pass away, is it? So we need to understand in the days of these kings, what will they be trying to do that will make God come and establish his kingdom. In the days of Nebuchadnezzar, he saw that it must be the kingdom of what? Gold, is it? All of it. And you must, you, you, you must look in the mirror and understand what are the kings of the earth trying to do? To face off all the other uh, currencies, is it? Mm. And establish their own financial system, is it? Babylon has its financial system made of gold alone and it attracted people. And this is where we are headed, where actually in the days of these kings, when they are floating to mix with the seeds of men, there are a lot of things happening in Daniel chapter 2, but we shall just look at one of it, how they are going to establish, how they are trying to establish their kingdom which cannot be surpassed in currency and in other things. And may the Lord help us that um, we will come to a position. Because right now, what people are trying to fight for is to get more money. Is it? Is it what they are striving for? To get more and for what reason? Pride. Huh? Pride. Pride. Is it? There are a lot of people who are studying today to get the degrees that Nebuchadnezzar was giving at his time so as to help the gospel go to the four corners of the world. Is it? <laughs> Many who are studying for these degrees are to get the degree of the king so as to build another empire for him. Is it? And we have to see that we are in the time that Daniel chapter 2 is being fulfilled in our lives. If we don't understand the great controversy, we may be in it, but on the opposite side. What a sorry state to be fighting, to be found fighting the God of heaven. Do you think that is what, where you want to be found? We don't want to be found fighting the God of heaven. And so we are going to study what the Lord has for us and see what he is speaking to us in David. Because the king of Babylon is about to raise another image. Is that true? Yes. Is the papacy healing the mortal wound? Yes. Is he the king of Babylon, spiritual Babylon? Yes. Is he going to have other kings planning with him? Yes. And what were, are they going to plan to prepare for the battle against who? The God of heaven, is it? The battle of Armageddon. Which side will you be on? Which side will I be on? And so may the Lord help us at the end of this meeting that um, I say I'll be converted and you'll be converted. Amen? Amen. And take the serious matter seriously. 
And instead of trying to establish another kingdom here on earth, which we think will continue forever, start building another kingdom, which we know will last forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Amen. Our Heavenly Father, your ways are not our ways, but we can tap into your ways by listening to your voice. And so while this world seems so beautiful in our eyes, help us to see a glimpse of Jesus Christ and see how this earth is full of nothingness like Solomon did see after he had enjoyed everything and called it vanity. Sometimes we have been bold in ourselves in the things that are not essential for this time. Lord, help us back to the true way that we may come out of the false ways. Whichever thing we like us to learn and those things we like us to unlearn, help us, Lord. For the human heart is carnal and it is not receptive to the things of the spirit. But if you give us a new heart, Lord, we shall be able to respond to spiritual things. For that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. And so thank you for your children that are gathered here, Lord. May this not be a condemnation, but information to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Amen.